Okay. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to Winning Wednesday. This is a, a spring block carving uh, webinar from Genus ABS. Uh, delighted to have so many of you with us today. Um, basically, the plan we're going to do is uh, just show you some of the exciting things we're doing with spring block carving genetics uh, in the next half an hour, 40 minutes. Um, you've got three different presenters. We're live. We're in different houses. That's the wonders of uh, modern technology. Um, and basically, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about what we're up to. Uh, and then at the end of it, at eight o'clock, we'll be launching a 24 hour special sale with some uh, special balls at special prices uh, just to you guys that are watching this webinar. So uh, delights to have you with us. If you've got any questions as you go, there's uh, just put them in the comment section, either on Facebook or on YouTube, whichever way you're listening. And we will answer them at the end. But, you know, welcome all your questions. Um, and then I'll just introduce uh, ourselves as the as the panel of three speakers. My name is Hugh Ratcliffe. I'm the GB General Manager. So I'm responsible for uh, managing the GB business in the UK for Genus. Uh, so we've got uh, around about 350 specialists uh, and uh, 60 salespeople uh, covering the, the whole of the UK. Uh, and I'm very honoured to, to lead that team. Thank you, Hugh. So I'm Hannah Goodwin and I'm the European uh, Dairy Brand Manager. Uh, I'm responsible for the dairy portfolio and dairy marketing strategy uh, here at Genus. Uh, lucky enough to have visited lots of block carving herds over the past couple of years. I'm really sort of seeing and observing that increase in sex semen usage with lots of the success stories, some of which you'll hear about today. Born and bred on a dairy farm, and it fascinates me every day, the decisions we can make uh, just purely by breeding strategy to really help increase that profitability and productivity, productivity of our dairy farms. Thanks, Han. Um, evening, everybody. I'm Jess Sims. I am the beef brand manager for Genus. So very similar to Hannah, I look after the supply of our genetics across uh, the GB region, um, also the, the beef brand and our marketing strategy. So I spend a lot of time uh, out on farm visiting customers and looking at our beef calves to really see how they're performing within our UK herds so we can make sure that we continue to offer good quality genetics to suit your block calving herds. So uh, I look forward to speaking to you later on. Great, thanks guys. So I'm going to start off and we'll just start off from the dairy genetics side of things. And um, <clears throat> we know it's very, very complicated when you're looking at bulls, there's so many companies, there's so many different indexes as well. And specifically when we're talking about spring carving herds, you know, we're really looking at the spring carbon index. So this is generated by AHDB. Uh, Mark Winters and his team do an amazing job generating spring carbon index, autumn carbon index, PLI, and all the bull proof data that we uh, we use to uh, differentiate bulls with. So when we're looking at spring carving herds, you know, what do we like about the spring carving index? Well, it's designed for spring carving herds in the UK with UK milk contracts. So that production element is a good balance between fat and protein solids. You've got a huge weight of uh, fertility, lifespan and body weight as well, reducing in, reduction in body weight. And you can see with the two different pie charts how spring carbon index changes differ slightly from the autumn carbon index a bit less production as you'd expect a bit more fertility and a bit more emphasis on on smaller body size i know we get a lot of questions from from customers regarding ebi so ebi is the equivalent of sci in ireland if you like so very very similar um climatic system to us and obviously a lot large percentage of that market our spring carving. So, you know, we think EBI is a great index. Um, we source a lot of our, our genetics from Southern Ireland. You know, they are selected on, on EBI, uh, but ultimately we, we also select them on SCI as well. So when you look at those two pie charts for, for EBI and SCI, you can see there's a lot of similarity. Production similar as a production weighting, survivability, fertility. They are very similar, but it's just worth pointing out there's a few differences. You've got to think that EBI is an index generated for Irish dairy farmers. So it's based around their milk contract. So obviously in Ireland, it tends to be an A plus B minus C milk contract. So there's a massive weighting on protein, just like there is in um, the SCI index. The downside is there's not as much weighting on fat percentage. So some of those bulls that are really high on fat can actually go lower down on the EBI ranking. So it's something to be made aware of. The other differences are they have a lot lower emphasis in, in health. 
um, in that sort of yellowy box, if you like, 4% health versus versus 11%. And that's because they don't get hammered as much for somatic cell counts as we do in, in GB in the UK. So, you know, some of those are high UBI balls. You just have to be careful that they can be a little bit high for somatic cell counts and be a little bit more prone to mastitis. Um, and there's also some things around the bull calves, the beef side of, of the Irish market that are included in EBI, which won't be relevant for the, for the UK production system. So very much from our point of view, we like the indexes. We, we will sell on SCI primarily. That is our primary focus. We think it's a great index for, for UK dairy farmers uh, and it's really relevant. So really keep that in mind when you're selecting bulls for this, this spring. Over to you, more. Hannah. Thank you very much. So thank you, Hugh. I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about strategy. So we really recognise at Genus an opportunity for block carving hers to really increase that profitability through a sexed and beef approach. So we're going to have a look at two different breeding strategies and really compare those advantages of using that, that sexed and beef strategy. So to your left, what you can see is what typically and historically a lot of farms would have used. So when we have a look at the best females in our herd and rank them uh, against our lower genetic females, typically uh, a lot of farms would have used conventional on the majority um, of, of the females and then a little bit of beef on the lower portion of the herd. What becomes very apparent here quite quickly is we have no control here over the quantity of replacements through conventional semen and also the quality of replacements we're going to get. So we know cost of production is at an all time high. So every female in that next generation is really gonna have to earn her keep genetically, truly provide us with the most profitable return. So if we have a look at a sexed and beef approach, and again, ranking that performance, as you can see from the graph, from our best females to our lower genetic females, what we can see is first, we establish the exact amount of number of females we need in the next generation. So in this example, about 25 to 30% replacement rate. So once you've got the amount of females um, used with sex cell, the remaining portion of the herd will then go to beef AI. And what we can see again here very visually is that's a significant amount of money we can generate through high value beef calves. And what genus, we call that a 13th milk check. So we're not even talking in this instance about the increased profitability that we can get with genetics. This is purely strategy. And we can sit down with you and we can go through your breeding goals to sit down and establish how many replacements you need. We can compare breeding strategies to provide the financials that you need to meet your business goals. Again, we know the performance of sex cell against conventional semen. Historically, there's been a concern in the past that potentially sex semen um, could have that potential compromise on that really important type block. But what we're seeing in the performance of sex cell, which is our own sex technology, is that performance is really strong and is th the gap is definitely narrowing. A recent analysis of 13,000 inseminations in just spring carving herds shows us very little difference between the performance of conventional to sexed um, sex fertility. So we really recognise an opportunity for farmers to get that genetic progress without compromising that really important block. So moving on, we've established that fertility is really our number one concern for really keeping that block as tight as possible. So I'm going to talk to you about the advancements and the evolution of sex cell technology and how it's evolved over time to really be that number one sex semen in the marketplace, which has been proved over 1 million inseminations worldwide. So we believe with the right protocol, the right management systems, that sex cell should be considered in any block carving herd to really drive forward uh, that increased profitability. So 
Conventional fertility and sexed fertility of a single bull is not always the same. So therefore at Genus, we record the fertility of every single sexed and conventional bull we market at Genus. And that enables us to make uh, really good informed decisions and gives us the best insight uh, into bull's performance on sort of a real time basis. So the, what we've done um, to improve that, so obviously we've improved the technology through the machines and the lasers with, with which Sexcel operates. But in addition to that, we've made huge investments into the research and development um, of improving sex semen so we can get it to be the best performing product uh, into the future. So we've improved things from bull nutrition to bull housing to make sure our bulls are producing not only the most fertile semen, but what we've also seen with these fine tweaks is we are getting bulls onto sex production two to three months younger than our competitors. We know younger bulls are going to have genetically more superior genetics. So we want to be able to market to our customers um, the, the most genetically superior bulls uh, in the marketplace. So now moving on, I'm going to hand over to Hugh, who's going to talk about the service and the benefits of that for your block carving herd. Thanks, Hannah. So, you know, obviously when we're looking at spring carving herds, you know, getting that six week in calf rate um, above 80 percent is our target. Um, and certainly something that we really think is so important is, is that AI service, you know, something that Genus is famous for, something that we've done for, for generations. But it's a side of a business that is really evolving a lot for us. And it's, it's an area we've put a huge amount of investment in the last uh, 10, 10 to 15 years. And certainly what we've seen in the spring sector is obviously with COVID, there's been lack of availability of, of other technicians that tend to come in to, uh, to help that, that workload in May and June. Um, so certainly we've seen an increase in, in interest in, in, our, in our AI service. I suppose a few things to really take, take note of is the training that we do for our specialists now. Um, we don't call them technicians, they're called specialists now because they're very skilled, uh, highly skilled people. Uh, so our training program lasts uh, normally on average four months. So it's quite a lot of investment that goes into that. But recently we've just moved to an online um, data program called BobbySync, which is how we track and monitor all the fertility data on hundreds of thousands of cows in, in the UK. So it's a brilliant way for us to track conception rates for all our uh, specialists, uh, identify any training needs that might require, but really make sure that that consistency of service that you get um, is, is really high, whether that's the, the main area specialist or what we call the multi-flask multi specialist who are the, the team that, that, that uh, cover on different days off when people are off. So, you know, as it says in the graphic, you know, 5,000 inseminations a year is, is average for one of our specialists. So huge numbers of cows AI every single day all over the year um, so that we you can ensure they're going to be match fit. So we're, we're definitely looking at um, it's sorting out our spring routes at the moment. So anyone who's interested in coming onto the AI service has not used us before. You know, let's start talking early. We we have different ranges of, of being able to price and and charge for the service, um, and we'll be delighted to talk to you. I suppose when we look at the that, that data set, just to give you a bit of an idea of that, um, you know, there's 350,000 cows in that data set that we've got on Bobby Sink. So every single time we do an in insemination that data goes into the cloud. And every time that customer has a pregnancy diagnosis session, a PD session, we get that PD data back. So we get that full data set uh, right at the start. And that gives us massive insight into, into many different things. As I said already, it gives us insight into whether our, our specialists are um, placing the team in the right place. It's absolutely critical. Um, and we really do that all the time, monthly and evaluating data. Um, it also gives us a huge amount of data on our bulls. Um, and Hannah's already talked about it, being able to really differentiate those bulls that are struggling to get pregnancy. So some bulls aren't as fertile as others. That's a well-known fact. But now with this data set, we actually will stop marketing those bulls 
uh, and they'll be called so that we can ensure that we're really removing that bottom 10, 20 percent of bulls to really increase conception rates. And that's something that we've seen across all the herds we work with in the last two years. Conception rates have continued to rise, which, which is great news for everyone. So, you know, really consider that that Genius AI service and, and RMS as well, um, which is if you want the full package and heat detection and, and there's some new RMS uh, testimonials to come. So I will hand back over to Hannah. Thank you, Hugh. So uh, what do our customers say? So we um, could have used lots of case studies in today's webinar, but um, one I got recently uh, down in Cornwall is a fantastic example of how sex cell and beef and focus, so that, that strategy has been used alongside that RMS service to really provide uh, fantastic results. So I visited Rob uh, down in Cornwall um, in the summer and I was absolutely blown away by the forward thinkingness of Rob. So Rob is a new entrant uh, into spring block carving, um, 145 cows on a once a day system comprising largely of Irish uh, Frisian cross jersey. So Rob took the plunge into sex, cell and beef straight away um, and left uh, Andrew Tremaine, so the reproductive management specialist, in charge of that fertility because a new entrant has lots of other things to concentrate on. So, so that fertility was really taken care of by the genus uh, reproductive uh, management specialist. So Rob was really happy with the results. So we can see here um, from that 12 uh, week block, a 3% empty rate, 80% eight week, eight, eight week in calf rate and a 64% conception rate with sex cell was achieved. So really good results there. Um, and they were able to be achieved because that time and effort was put into that breeding season. Um, and Rob, Going forward, wants to expand the herd. So really ambitious plans of, of upsizing to 250 to 300 cows. So sex cell is going to provide him with the ability to do that. Uh, and genetically putting those on the most superior heifers is going to do that uh, really, really successfully. So the future plans are to potentially use um, the tool I'm going to talk about in a minute to really provide informed decisions about which females go to sex and which go to beef. So you can read more about Rob's story on social media um, and our website as well, alongside numerous other case studies of uh, sex semen usage in spring herds. So moving on, um, I'm really excited to talk to you about our herd ranking tool. So our herd ranking tool uh, is a unique tool created specifically for block carving herds and is a tool developed by our in-house PhD geneticist, Dr. Christopher Orett. And this tool is being improved and tweaked over time to make it the most efficient tool in the marketplace. And I believe is the only tool in the marketplace that really allows um, that ability to differentiate and rank that performance on a spring carving index base. So we created this tool. We had a lot of spring carving customers who use sex cell, obviously had really good results, but really wanted that ability to make more informed decisions about which females to breed to dairy and which to breed to beef. So hence the creation of the herd ranking tool. So how does the tool work? Well, first of all, we need your milk records. So in order to use this tool, we would ask um, for access to those milk records to really sort of maximise their usage. And then uh, we'll sit down with you, we'll talk to you about your herd's goals, and then we'll help to create a custom index. So if you want to really improve the fertility, drive components, um, really sort of reduce body size, for example, we can create an index that will really allow you to wait for those traits um, so we can help to really, really make this index as bespoke as possible. So once you've established the replacements needed and we've created our index, we will then get um, a really nice, simple, easy to use report and it's going to indicate us which females to go to sex and then which to go to beef. So another benefit of this tool is we can produce um, a mature equivalent milk solids for every cow that has completed a full lactation. 
So for example, if you have a cow that has done a full lactation, we can calculate what her milk solids were and we'll put that on a mature equivalent base. So those first lactation heifers, we can predict what they would produce as a mature cow. This really enables us to standardize herd her performance so we are able to rank at the performance of those females against each other. So I'm just going to use a really simple uh, demonstration now and we're going to go through an example of a customer who's used the herd ranking tool. So in this particular example, uh, we've got a herd size of 680. So we sat down with the customer and we've established how many replacements we need, how many uh, do we need in our next generation? So we're going to use 300 there. We're going to breed 300 to dairy. Then we're going to create our custom index. So in this particular example, I'm going to weight 80% towards SCI. So remember, Hugh talked about the benefits of SCI, which are really already going to favour fertility. They're going to favour milk solids. So I'm really confident with the weighting of that index is going to help me with my herd. And the other 20%, we're going to uh, focus on a mature equivalent. So that's going to give us our customised index. So really nice and simple. That is then going to provide the females in my herd. And by line number, I can then see the sire of that particular female depicted um, in the text. I can then view the lactation that particular female is in. And then the index number is going to basically tell me uh, the higher the number that that Basically, that female is going to be really, really good on our index. So she's more likely to go to dairy. The lower the number, she really falls out of that custom index. So she's more likely to go to beef AI service. So if we move this on, what we can see, so we'll pick on a couple of examples. So the female at the top of the screen suits the custom index really well. So she's a high ranking female within our herd. So she's going to be bred to dairy. And the really clever graph to your left just shows the distribution um, of the females and how they sit within that index. A lower ranking female within the herd. So you can see her index is significantly lower. She's going to go to beef. She doesn't cut it. She doesn't meet what we want in our, in our deter predetermined custom index. So she's going to have a, a straw of beef semen. So what we see very clearly here, that cutoff being around sort of 95 and above, we'll go to, to sex semen and we'll go to dairy. Anything lower than that, we're going to give a beef service. It's a really simple tool to use. And I've visited numerous customers that have used the herd ranking tool and they've all commented on its simplicity and that ability just to really make really sharp, quick and informed decisions. I'm going to talk to you about just one of those particular case studies. So uh, Matthew and Coral Senior uh, at Eastfield Farm um, operate a spring block carving herd on a robotic system down in Somerset. So a really nice uh, example of a robot herd on a spring system, an organic herd, a really, really nice setup. And I've thoroughly enjoyed walking around this herd uh, back in the sunny September. So Matthew and Coral uh, decided to use the herd ranking tool because for them, they'd used sexed and beef and it was really, really working very well. But to get to those business goals quicker, they wanted to make better informed decisions. So ranking the performance of their herd was really critical um, in basically reaching those goals a lot sooner. So again, um, Matthew and Coral sat down with their Rob Burlton and Paul Voicey, their key account manager and breeding advisor, and spoke about the direction they wanted to go genetically to really meet uh, their business goals. So that custom index was created. They had fantastic data. So using Lely robots really provided that milk recording data instantly. So it's a very quick case of transferring that data. The custom index was created and it provided excellent insight into the breeding decisions and um, the herd ranking tool recommended.
Now, obviously, these are recommendations and you can tweak and you can use the herd ranking tool to your advantage and you can have a play around with that um, to, to, to your own sort of uh, device just to so you can make those decisions yourself. Um, but the herd ranking tool obviously takes that milk recording data to give you a best guess on what to breed to dairy and what to breed to beef. So I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Jess, who's going to talk about beef in focus and maximising that beef calf revenue. Thank you, Hannah. Um, so now I'm going to talk to you about um, the beef element and hopefully the, the section where you can make the most money. So as Hannah and Hugh have really touched upon, by adopting the, the sex L and beef in focus strategy, you can use sex L on your very best animals within your herd, which then frees up a lot more animals to inseminate with beef sires. So essentially, it's really important to make sure you're using the very best and most suitable beef genetics for your block calving herd so that you can maximise that, that calf crop value. And as Hannah referred to before, that is what we refer to as the 13th milk check, because you can generate more money from a, a beef cross calf compared to the traditional Holstein bull calf. So if we think back a couple of years, um, beef was really seen as the commodity product and probably the last resort to getting cows and calf. But today we see a lot more customers throughout the UK and in other markets really adopting this sexton beef strategy. So there is a lot of work and a lot of data that really goes into producing the very best beef genetics. So obviously, first and foremost, uh, the dairy farmer is our priority in the fact we want to make sure we produce bulls that are easy calving, short gestation length, but still produce a really good quality calf that you can go on and sell a couple of weeks or, or beyond. Um, but also with that in mind, we want to make sure you, you, can provide, uh, you can provide good quality calf for the whole beef supply chain. So if you think about it, when you sell your calf onto the calf buyer or if you rear it yourself, you really want to make sure you have a, a beef calf that grows quickly, uh, eats less food and achieves a really good daily life weight gains. Because essentially that's going to impact positively on your profit margin. And then when we look at the, the processor and the retailer, we want to make sure that we're creating consistent, good quality beef uh, with a good carcass yield so that we can maximise profit. But also from a retailer perspective, really make sure we're creating a good quality product for the consumer so that they increase the chances that they're likely to shop in that, that red meat sector. So the, the whole aim of the game is to make sure we're producing the very best beef sires and collecting data on every stage of the life cycle, right from conception and to, to consumption. So we can make sure we're providing not just yourselves with the best quality genetics, but also looking ahead to what the customer wants as well. So as we move on to the next slide, um, I can really talk through where the data, the capturing process really starts and really our, our beef brand in marketing that, that product. So to understand how our bulls perform, uh, we can't just look at a bull uh, and think phenotypically, oh, that looks, that looks really good and it will be easy carving. Well, we actually have to go out and collect real world data on each of our sires that we market to the dairy industry. So they have to go through uh, really uh, extensive testing. So that starts by releasing a couple of thousand units of a young sire to dedicated UK dairy farmers, where we will then capture the data on every calf born on those farms. So the data that we capture is formed from five economically relevant traits. So these will be uh, assessing calving ease, the gestation length, the survivability of the calf, and also how good quality it is. So that ultimately we can maximize the value of every single pregnancy. So once we have all of that data, that forms what we call our beef advantage index. And this is where we give a financial value to a sire, showing the extra profit that that sire can achieve when compared to the average of the same breed. So because we've been collecting data on all of our bulls for the last 20 years now, we're in a great position to be able to really market the very best genetics. So the best sires that perform well for carving ease and gestation length, we can then take uh, semen off those, put them back into our embryo herd and create the next generation of genetic elite offspring. 
And because of that really extensive data collection process, we now feel really confident and that we're in a great position to be able to market beef genetics uh, into the spring block sector. So now we really encourage this idea of using beef from day one. So, for example, using a British blue sire um, to colour mark the, the offspring and then switching to a short gestation angus at the end of the block to really tighten that carving period. So you can really feel confident in the beef genetics um, that we can talk to you about today. So as we move on to the next slide then, um, I'd like to talk to you about our secondary index, something that we've recently launched um, within the industry. Um, and this is called um, New Era Profit. And this index is really for those of you who are uh, keeping your own beef calves. So if you're taking them through to finish, or if you are selling them to perhaps one calf buyer, one sort of private outlet, your neighbor or whoever it may be, and they, you really want them to benefit from the very best beef genetics. So thinking back to creating genetics that perform for the whole beef supply chain. So New Era Profit uh, really allows you to select for animals that are not only born easily, but also grow and perform well throughout the supply chain. So they have quick growth rates and they consume less feed. Uh, and thinking about where the feed price is today, it's really beneficial if we can produce animals that eat less, but still have that desired growth rate, because that will really positively impact on your profit margins. Um, so today, through these indexes, we have uh, the data available on our British Blues and our Angus sires, uh, and we've been able to see that we can add over £100 uh, extra profit per uh, British Blue animal produced of our very best sires, uh, and £95 per head uh, extra for our Angus sires. Uh, and this is largely driven by reduced uh, days to slaughter and the reduced feed costs. So that's a really beneficial index. Um, so not only is this obviously benefit uh, to your calf buyer or to yourselves if you are keeping the calves, this is also beneficial to the, the processor and the retailer because there's also a really good sustainability uh, element to this as well. And when you think about how much sort of uh, negativity we get from the press, we really need to demonstrate that we're making uh, the steps to achieve a really sustainable product. So today, for example, we can demonstrate that our British blue sires are 11% more carbon efficient per kilogram of live weight gain uh, that they produce. So this is a really positive step within the beef industry, and we're proud to be uh, really at the forefront of this, uh, this data collection. So as we move on then um, to the next slide, I'd really like to share with you uh, two customer examples uh, of how we've achieved great results with a, a sex L and beef and focus strategy on farm. Uh, so the first customer I'd really like to talk about is Martin Wheelton. So he's a spring block, spring block carving farmer uh, based in Cheshire and operating across uh, two herds. So the first herd is comprised of around 550 cows uh, and the second 220 cows. So a really great example uh, of what we're going to share with you today. So uh, Martin was originally using uh, all conventional dairy genetics before we really saw the benefits of a sexton beef strategy. Uh, and then he completely switched, made the switch across to that approach. Uh, and he really is a firm believer in using beef from day one uh, and incorporating that into the breeding season. So around 25% uh, of his animals will go straight to these sires and is really, really impressed with the conception rates um, that he's achieved there. So all of the beef calves go to one private buyer and he's had excellent feedback uh, from his buyer to say that the calves that he's created um, have really grown and performed well. And I quote from Martin, it's really nice um, that these calves can make money for our herd rather than costing uh, our business money. So we thought that was, was really positive. Um, and then again, when selecting for dairy genetics and um, fertility and carbon ease is, is really important for Martin. Um, so sex cell usage is really well planned and um, they inseminate the heifers on a synchronized uh, program and inseminate the cows based off the previous fertility and pre um, performance um, data within the herd. So as a result of this really tight management, he's achieved 85% uh, 
85% of his females were in calf within the first eight weeks, um, which Martin was was really impressed by. Um, so I thought this was a really great example uh, to share with you today. So thank you, Martin, for allowing us to, to speak about you. Um, the next um, is an example of a flying herd, um, a spring block carving uh, customer, uh, Dave Hitchens, um, Keris Dairy based in Cornwall. And he's really uh, reaped the benefits of using high beef in focus uh, sires. So Dave is actually um, a new entrant and he bought the herd back in spring 2021, all in calf to high beef and focus sires. Um, so the herd comprised of 190 head of Jersey crosses and Irish freezing cows, which have all then been put back uh, into calf with high beef advantage sires selecting really heavily for um carving ease but also calf quality as well because he likes to sell his calves at around three weeks old so the combination of the two is really important for him so they carve for about a 12-week block and have been really impressed with the conception rates that they've achieved um averaging around 60 percent um, with 140 cows in calf in the first three weeks uh, first six weeks so they were really happy uh, with these results and that was also down uh, to the fact that he worked with our reproductive specialist um Gary Wooten um who he was he had the confidence that he would put the genetics in the right places to get the cow and calf which is evident uh, with the results that he's achieved here um, and that was a big benefit for David because it allowed him to focus on heat detection but also other areas within the business so he wasn't just solely focusing on serving his cows and um, so here are just real two great examples of, of uh, success within spring block carving herds and as Hannah alluded to before these are you can read more about them on social media also on our website as well but you know please ask questions in the chat um you know in the comments section if you have any further questions in regards to beef or any of the the testimonials that we've shared with you um today so I suppose uh, now the bit you, you've all been waiting for, uh, the exciting bit, the offer that occurs after these webinars. Um, so it's great to see so many of you on here today. Um, so you'll have um, 24 hour access to our VIP offer. And that will feature a range of great genetics at great prices from both dairy and beef genetics. So um, the offer is open. So it opened at eight o'clock this evening and it will close at 8 p.m. tomorrow. So really make sure that you uh, go onto our sales platform and take a look at some of the genetics. They do go quickly. So I'd uh, urge you to, to get on there as fast as you can. Um, so I know that the, the link to the sales platform has now appeared in the comments section. So please give, give that a look. Um, and also this will appear in your emails as well. So please check your inbox in case it's gone in there as well. So I'll quickly chat through some of the beef sires um, that will appear on the offer before handing back to Hannah to share with you some of the dairy sires. So as we move on to the, the beef sires um, that are on the offer, we have um, two um, fantastic um, Angus bulls. Um, so these are Firstly, um, New Era 155, who is a fantastic all-round sire with exceptional carving ease. And the second is New Era 72, and he's noted for his, his high fertility and exceptional carving ease. So they're two really good Angus sires that are available to you today. We also have a Hereford on offer, so a Proteus, who's noted for exceptional calf quality and also really good carving ease. Um, and then we move on to our uh, British Blue section. We have two sires on offer for you today. One, a New Era Magnum, who produces Blue Roam progeny that are really good quality, so ideal for colour marking those, those offspring. And next uh, is the famous uh, Quarry Bank Money Man. Uh, he's noted to be the shortest gestation blue sire that we market today. Um, and he's really ideal for tightening that carbon block and making sure that it stays within that, that tight period. Um, so really great genetics available to you today. Um, 
one really important thing which I've alluded to uh, throughout is these genetics are proven um, and we have the highest cutoff rate um, across all um, genetic companies for our for our proven rate for our beef sires. So for a, a beef bull to be classed as proven, they need 120 carvings across 60 herds. So you can really have confidence in using those genetics uh, this time around. So Hannah, I'll hand over to you to just uh, talk about some of the dairy genetics that feature. Thank you very much, Jess. So um, really, really excited today to, to, to put forward 12 um, bulls on the uh, Winning Wednesday offer. So this is arguably the best lineup of bulls we've ever made available. So we're taking your feedback on board and we've put together the most diverse range of bulls. So we've got various breeds here, so Frisians, Irish Frisians, Holsteins and Norwegian Reds. And they've all been specially selected for their ability to improve fertility, components, reduce maintenance and really, um, really drive forward the profitability. So all the slides we've talked about before, these balls are really going to suit your system. So I'm not going to talk about each and every sire because you can make those decisions yourselves. Um, but check check them out. You can see their full linears and their full proofs uh, available through the link just posted below. And remember as well, um, there's 12 bulls in front of you, but we have just produced our spring 2022 grazing directory. So make sure you check that out on our website um, for even more sires that are available um, to you as you're making those genetic selections for that spring uh, carving season. <clears throat> So that makes the webinar, I think, come to a close. Um, so now I believe we've got some questions that have come through. So we'll take a few minutes to answer those questions um, before we wrap everything up this evening. <clears throat> Thank so you. Yeah. Thank you, Hannah. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come in. So I'll start with your, your dairy ones. Um, and then I will sort of answer some of the beef ones. Mm -hmm. So the first question um, that's come in is, um, customer is interested in Irish Holstein Frisians. Um, do you have any available in Sexel at the moment? Yeah, so you can see from the slide before, um, we've got a really good range of uh, Irish Holstein Frisians. We are actively marketing five today that are available through Sexel. So check out uh, Cherry Hill Edmund. He's one we're really excited about, our number one bull for EBI, so 308 EBI there. But all of our bulls excel for uh, that fertility um, and that reduced maintenance too. And we do have additional bulls as well that are also available. We're actively marketing five today. So go and check them out and see which ones uh, are suitable for yourself. Thanks, Han. Um, I think there's two beef ones, so I'll have a go at um, answering those. Um, so the first one that's come in is, do you see much variation within the breed for carving ease and gestation length, or is it mostly between uh, breeds? Um, so yes, there is a massive difference between breeds. So there will be a difference between um, Angus, British Blues and Limousins, all will offer a uh, different carving ease and gestation lengths, but there's also a massive difference within the breed as well. So if I take British Blues, for example, it's really important that we test all of these within the dairy herd because some will come out with a 5% chance of a difficult carving, whereas some will come out with 0.2% chance of a difficult carving. So those that you know achieve above a uh, three and a half percent chance of a hard carving, we would actually pull from the market and never market into the dairy herd. So that's really testament to the programme, which is why we collect data throughout each stage of, of their life cycle. So thank you for that question. Um, another one that's come in is, is there a way for beef farmers to seek beef and focus progeny from dairy herds? Um, really good question. Um, absolutely, um, there is a way. Um, so what I would say is get in touch with either your local breeding advisor or um, my email address and contact number has been shared um, on the webinar and all of the, the material leading up to the webinar. So please uh, get in contact with myself. But ultimately, yes, our goal is to link the dairy farmer to a, a beef uh, rearer or finisher so that we can really make sure you have an outlet for your for your carbs moving forward. So thank you for those questions. 
Um, I think a couple of the other uh, questions that are coming in was just around they, you know, enjoyed the webinar and, it, and it's been useful. Um, can't quite see if there are any more. There's a question from Nick at the bottom just come in. Yeah, shall I read that one out? Um, so how much milk recording data do you need to use uh, the herd ranking tool? Um, slash how frequently do you need to record monthly or quarterly and how does the, the tool rank the herd? So three parts of that question I can recap if we need to. Do you want to take that one, Hugh? Yeah, I can do. Yeah, good question, Nick. So um, <clears throat> the more times you record, the more accurate the data will be from a, a milk solids point of view. So uh, we do herd ranking uh, tool reports so people that only do it quarterly uh, and also monthly as well. So quarterly is fine. Um, it just you just have to take it that you know if one of those milk recordings is out, then the reliability will be slightly lower on that individual cow's um, ranking. Um, the, one of the key areas it needs to work is that to just have quite a high number of sire IDs of the cows. So if you've got milk recording where you know, you know, 60, 70 percent of the cows and what their sires are, that allows us to be able to rank much, much more accurately than if we don't know what the sires are. So it all depends on how accurate that uh, that recording has been in the past uh, on the farm. So if we can get good sire IDs, if we can get good milk solids data, then that makes it really accurate and allows us to produce a really accurate list for you to follow. Um, how does the tool rank the herd? It depends on you. So it, it's customized. So if, if you, uh, you, you know, we'll sit down with you and decide what are your breeding goals? Do you want your cows to be, you know, focus more on solids? Do you want to focus more on, on daughter fertility? And how do their weightings, weightings change? So it's very much up to you how you, you come up with the index. And it's that combination of traits that then ranks the cows. So um, that's that's really up to up to how you do it. So hopefully that answers the question, Nick. I think there's a question from John. Is it in the tie-in of the beef pools so they're approved to sell calves to likes of meadow quality or butylar? It's probably one for you, Jess. Yeah, um, the answer is yes, uh, there is. So we submit a list of uh, all of our, our bulls that we market into the dairy herd. So we have a selection of Angus, uh, Limousin, British Blues and Simmental and Hereford uh, listed on those approved lists. Um, now, bear in mind, we can't have all of our sires on those lists because otherwise uh, the likes of Beddow Quality and Butelar uh, will have a big long list of uh, sires that we could pick from. So uh, the sires on the list are all proven um and they're all been selected for the beef advantage trait so essentially if the sire appears on that list they will be in our top category for carving ease gestation length and calf quality so um there's a really good range and mixture of sires on that list good question thank you for that one i think that um that concludes all of our questions and also conscious that we've run over um, by a few moments. So uh, if you've got any questions, either post them in the comment section um, and we can answer them at a later date or please reach out to Hannah, Hugh or myself and we can answer your questions directly. Um, the sales platform is now open, so please head over to there. Um, and thank you very much for, for tuning in. We, we hope you've enjoyed uh, the session. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.